What's up, guys? Welcome to round three recap. Uh, by the way, I just actually recorded this recap a second ago, and I got like 20 minutes into the recording and realized that the mic somehow wasn't working. Um, I've been having that problem where it randomly deselects the, the source, and it's just selects a source that's not even plugged in, and so it just doesn't record any sound. So yeah, I'm not on my normal computer. It's my laptop, and it I don't know why that happens, but it does from time to time. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do this recap for the second time, so hopefully it'll be a little smoother than the first time because I just did it all. Uh, anyway, had a almost four-hour game. I played a 13-year-old kid. He's an international master, um, 2,400, very strong player. And uh, this game, I think, is going to be even more interesting than the last one. So if you enjoyed that one, uh, you're probably going to like this one. So uh, let's jump right in for the second time. Okay, so I'm sticking with the plan, not changing anything here. Uh, going for the King's Indian, right? And he plays Bishop G4 on move two. Now, I don't know if there's some, like, hidden idea behind this or, or what the deal was. But it, it did surprise me, but I didn't, like, worry about it. I'm like, I don't really care. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, develop my pieces. And he was just developing his pieces and I didn't really, yeah, it was just kind of like normal. All right, let's just get our pieces out. Then we'll start playing chess. So that's what we did. I played C4. Um, normally in the King's Indian, you strike back either with E4 or C4. I decided why put myself into a pin since I already can see the bishop sitting there. I'll just go this way and, uh, you know, leave this diagonal open for my bishop. Maybe we can get some pressure there. So he castles B3. I didn't really know what to do with this bishop, so I thought, hey, let's put it there. And um, yeah, c6, bishop b2, e5. Okay, so I traded this off, and h3. Now, uh, bishop h5. Okay, I felt at this point like, okay, my position's pretty solid. I felt like it's probably pretty equal. I mean, yeah, he's got a little bit more central control, but I don't really have any weaknesses. This is pr pretty standard in the, the King's Indian type of setups, right? So I was like, okay, I could just play rookie one, knight f1. Take it slow, you know, play something like rook c1, maybe a3, just kind of see what he's going to do. Or, and I had this idea, I could go and hunt down this bishop, play like g4, and go take it. And and then I get the bishop pair. But it comes at a cost that I, you know, push these pawns in front of my king. So I really wasn't sure. I thought a little bit about that. And then I decided, let's, let's do it. Let's go get the bishop. Uh, engine doesn't mind it too much. It wanted me to just play e4 and strike back in the center, but this was the third engine move, so that's not terrible. Knight h4, traded it off, and here we go. Okay, and I saw that this knight was going to be able to come in here, but I didn't realize that the combination of this along with some of his other moves actually was pretty dangerous, um, and you, you'll see that in just a second. So first of all, though, I have to stop knight f4. Knight f4 looks like a really nice move, so I didn't want that, um, so I just played e3 f5 and this was kind of the idea that i didn't really think through like when you push your pawns forward like this so instead of it being on g3 now it's on g4 well black can attack that sorry i don't know what just happened uh the internet that's fun hey there's my comments wow thank you for that okay all right i'm gonna pretend like that didn't happen and just keep on talking um i think i was saying something about yeah, when you push your pawns forward, it's it makes it easier for your opponent to attack them, right? So he can immediately play f5, and now there's like this tension, which wouldn't be there if my pawn was back on g3, right? So this was a drawback. I knew that that was a risk that I was willing to take when I went and got the bishop. I was hoping that as the position opened up, the bishops would become more active, right? So, uh, okay, so f5, and I was like, I don't really know what to do. Like, I don't really want to take this and let the rook into the game, and potentially like come over here or you know attack my king right like i don't really want to do that I, i'd like to play a move like f4 except i just can't right now because he's just got it you know too many pieces controlling that so i can't do that i just lose a pawn i'm like what am i gonna do um i thought about e4 but the problem with that is then the f4 square becomes really nasty for the knight i didn't want to let that happen so i didn't want to move this pawn didn't want to move this didn't want to move this can't really move this or then this capture. I was like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And also it just gets taken. So like, you see how I can't really move any of those. I could have moved this to D4, but then I'm like, he's just gonna push this. Now both of my bishops are shut in. So I'm like, okay, can't move or don't wanna move any of these pawns. 
And so because of that, I'm like, well, let's play A4. Uh, I have an attack on the pawn. The knight's defending it. Maybe I can kick the knight away and win a pawn. Like that was, that was it. I didn't really know what else to do. A5, he stopped that. And then I played rook C1. I'm like, well, it's an open file. Rooks go on open files. Let's do it. Queen E7, bishop C3. The idea here is that I want to keep the rook babysitting this pawn, right? Because he's probably going to want to move his rook somewhere over here. And if he does, well, now I can take the pawn. So that made sense, right? Um, okay, knight h4, bishop h1. This was kind of my plan. I didn't want to just give up that bishop that I worked so hard to get, right? Um, e4. All right, this is a pretty logical looking move. Engine was saying some crazy stuff like h5 and some other things are really good for black. But anyway, e4 was kind of like a move that a human would play. Basically, what he's trying to do is, is two things. Number one, uh, if this bishop ever leaves this diagonal, I have to watch out for this and checkmate. So that's one thing. The other thing is, remember this bishop that I worked so hard to get, you know, the bishop pair? Well, now it's like not doing a whole lot. So yeah, this is kind of a continuing, um, what am I trying to say? This is a, a problem I've had right before. Uh, the last game against the Grandmaster, same kind of thing happened, right? The H pawn came down, bishop got stuck in the corner. And this is, you know, something that you have to be aware of when you play the King's Indian. This does happen uh, from time to time. Now, that being said, this bishop's actually doing a decent job controlling the knight. Because if this bishop wasn't here, I'd have to really be careful for some of these things. But because it is, it, th these pieces are kind of like just monitoring each other, right? So I didn't feel that bad about it. But it is something that I wanted to kind of keep an eye on as the game went on. Anyway, uh, I captured it. He captured and... I had um, this thought in my head, okay? Here's what I was thinking. Bishops are good in open positions. This is not really open for this bishop. What if I sacrifice my knight and then play queen to d4, right? So this is what I was thinking. Takes, takes, queen to d4. I'm attacking the knight. I'm attacking the pawn. I'm setting up a potential checkmate threat here. Now it's already defended, right? So that's not like a huge deal. But I was like, okay, then I can bring the rook over. It's, the position's now more open. Maybe my bishops can do something. And some of the lines that I looked at, like knight to d7, there was like rook to d1 I thought was a pretty nice move, piling up on the pieces. And I felt like I was going to get some good compensation. But, okay, but there was this little voice inside my head saying, Nelson, stop sacrificing pieces when you don't see a concrete like way to win you know, material or checkmate or something. Like, just don't do it. So I was having this battle of like, well... I really would like to do this, but I probably shouldn't. There must be something that maybe I'm missing. Should I, shouldn't I, should I not? And then I was thinking like, okay, well, what else can I play? Like if I don't do that, like what other moves can I play? So I'm like, okay, let's look around. And then I came up with queen e2. And I said, all right, I'll move queen to e2. And why did I want to play? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I want to play f4. Here's what's going on. I want to play f4 because I don't like what's happening on this diagonal. I don't like what's happening on this f3 square with the rook and the pawn and the knight. I want to kind of shut that down and play playing f4. Now the rook is out of the action and my rook can help. Okay. So this is what I want to do. The problem is he just en passants. And then this is hanging. So if I take it back, I just lose my pawn, right? So my solution was queen e2 to defend that. So now I can play f4. And then if this happens, I can just take it and my pawn's defended over here, right? All right. So in my mind, I'm like, Option one, sacrifice the piece. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, option two, queen e2. And so I finally decided uh, to listen to that voice and, and not sacrifice the piece. So I didn't take it, okay? And by the way, let's just check. The engine says it was the right choice to not sacrifice because knight f3 check. I saw this. I was going to take it. Takes. I saw that he could do this, but then I'm like, I'm just getting his knight. So I get my piece back. But yeah, it's, it's bad for me because of my king. Look at this. There's a bishop. There's a rook. This queen's probably going to come over. Yeah, it's really bad for me. So even though I get my piece back, it doesn't work out. Okay. So I feel like that was a, a good decision, uh, you know, on my part to not go with that. Uh, <laughs> it, I don't know why I have that tendency just like, uh, you know, sacrifice pieces when I don't need to. So queen e2. That's what I played. All right, so he plays rook to c8. Now, remember earlier I said, or I think I said, um, the bishop here was monitoring this pawn, right? So that he couldn't use that rook. So he, he did it anyway. And I'm like, okay, so what's going on 
if I take this pawn. So this is a really good learning opportunity. This is pretty advanced, I would say. So if you're a beginner, don't feel bad if you don't see this, but what is the problem with taking this pawn? What What is black going to do if I would have taken this pawn? I didn't take it by the way, but uh, go ahead, pause, think about it for a little bit if you want, or you don't have to. Um, but yeah, if you had a chance to do that and you're ready to see the solution, basically what's going on is that bishop was controlling this diagonal and this square, right? Remember I talked about this earlier. Uh, queen to e5 is a very, very strong move because there's checkmate on h2. And I don't have anything that I can do to stop it except push this pawn forward so that my queen can help out. Like that's literally the only move I can play. Uh, not the only move, but the only one that makes sense, but it doesn't even matter. En passant happens and I am just a mess here. And it has to do with, if I take the, uh, let's see, queen comes in, it's like mate and five from this position, bishop g2, rook takes c1, then the knight is gonna be falling. It's Everything just falls apart, right? But it all has to do with how strong this threat is right here. Okay, so that's why I couldn't take the pawn. All right, so let's go back. Uh, congratulations if you saw that. And so I didn't take that. I said, I think now it's time to play f4, right? That's Remember, that's why I wanted to go to e2, so that I could play f4, shut down this diagonal, get my rook involved to help control this square, and my queen can sort of monitor and help defend my king if need to, if, I, if it needs to. All right, so I played that. He plays bishop a3, it's a good move. Attacks my rook, can't move like this, or the bishop gets captured. So I had to play rook c2. Now the problem is this guy's pinned, right? If I try to move this somewhere, I'm losing my rook. So I didn't want to leave that. Normally I would do something like this, but I can't. The bishop is there. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Uh, oh, you know, black's turn. Uh, knight to b1. And so basically I'm trying to get the bishop to go away. Also defends my rook, so it's no longer pinned. So I can move my bishop. And I was thinking in the future, knight can go there and attack some important things. Uh, sorry, like this. All right, I'm trying to draw arrows, having a hard time. Anyway, knight b1, kicks the bishop away. Okay, so he goes here. Very sneaky move. Um, if you would like to figure out what happens if I take here, you can go ahead and pause and think through this one a little bit. And if you're ready to see the solution, the move that he would have played is bishop takes e3 check. And the idea is that I can't really take it with my queen or I lose the defender of this rook and he just takes it. So... Uh, and then the other option, move my king over here. Well, that's also not good because of like this, and I'm just in trouble. So, uh, very clever move, and luckily for me, I saw that. So I played rook over here, just kind of lining up here. Um, and actually, this was a bad move. There's a tactic that Stockfish found. I didn't see it, and he didn't see it. So if you want to pause, you can, but it's not an easy one. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a second if you want. Go ahead, pause it, and see what black can play here. All right, well, the move is rook takes f4. And at first glance, it kind of looks like an obvious tactic. Like, okay, the, uh, the pawn is pinned. Why not just take the pawn, right? But I was planning, if he did that, to play bishop d4. And now I'm attacking the rook. I'm also attacking the bishop, which is pinned. And it looks like really good for me, or so I thought. Stockfish says, nope, because knight to f3 check. And I mean, I guess I don't really want to take it because now the rook is all up in my face here. And I don't, I'm not even really winning a piece here. He can just take it, I guess. And the queen's probably coming over. Yeah, it looks very, very scary. So the only thing that I could do would be... Oh, no, that's the best move. I have to take it. Yeah, because if I play king g2, what happens? Something happens here. Let's see. The rook just goes back. Yeah, so basically, he could have gotten away with taking it, and he would have been fine. Uh, but I think he was probably scared of this move, just like I was thinking I, I could do it, and it was good for me. But it's it wasn't. Anyway, he played b6. Um, I played bishop d4, right? And I'm taking advantage of this pin. So he can't take me, because I have this. And let's see. I think this is where I was getting low on time. Um, let me check my sheet. Yeah, so we both have about 20, 20 to 25 minutes at this point. And I knew that I still had to make like, let's see, we're on move 26. So yeah, I still had to make like 14 moves. So that's not a lot of time. So he plays rook here. Queen b5. I wanted to get my queen involved. And uh, I figured, let's go over here. It's attacking a lot of things. Once this bishop gets traded off, there's going to be pawns like all over the place that I might potentially be able to take with the queen. So queen b5. 
Queen to d6. And let me see. I think this is the moment in the game. Is it? Yeah, let's go with one. Yeah, yeah, it was right here. So he plays queen d6. And I, I started to really have a tough time figuring out what to do. Um, this is a complicated position. So there's like, there's stuff happening with the bishop. There's tension here. There's a pawn that I was hoping that I could potentially take that he's now defending. My knight's kind of out of the action. This is, I don't know what's happening here. There's knight f3. There's, I was thinking he's going to play g5. The rook's going to come in. If I take and he takes with the knight, then there's knight to d3. Like there's so many things going on. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, I have like 20 minutes or let's see, 19 minutes. I still have to make like 14 moves. That's a, that's roughly, you know, a, a little over a minute per move, right? So I'm like, I don't have a lot of time. I feel like the position is about to get more complicated. So I'm going to need more time. Otherwise, I'm going to blunder in time pressure. So I played Rook to D1, uh, lining up here, which actually was the top engine move. Don't know how I found that. I think I just... Yeah, I was kind of feeling, you know, like I needed to do something along this diagonal, put pressure on the, the deep on. So I played that G5, like I mentioned, right? He's he's trying to open up this for the rook, the knight, the queen. It gets pretty nasty. Um, again, I was having this this moment of like, okay, what do I play? And let me see what did, when did I play? I want to look at this for a second. Yeah, so I spent four minutes, which remember I only have 15 minutes left now for the rest of the uh, like 12 moves. And I couldn't decide between knight to c3 and rook c to d2. So part of me was like, okay, I want to do this because it d doubles up my rooks, lines up here. There's a lot of tactics going on here. I don't know that I can explain it all right now because I'm tired. And basically what it comes down to is he's going to take here. Once that happens, the queen's coming in and I'm going to get mated. So I have to do something quick. So I'm thinking I have like one move after he takes to do something going to be take here and then either take with my rook or if my knight's here potentially take with my uh this rook and have this knight that's basically what's going on so i was like i don't know i think i'm gonna go with knight c3 he did take it and then i got this idea and i don't actually no yeah yeah i know what happened so again i had the idea to sacrifice a piece and the reason was I was thinking, okay, if I don't sack the piece and I just trade here, he's going to take with the knight. Yes, I can do this, but I thought he could just move his queen somewhere. Um, and I didn't know what I was going to do. Although engine is telling me I'm fine. I just trade and play. What do I play? Then I just take it. Yeah. See, this is what I was afraid of. I was like, I, this just seems really scary. Like, isn't this pawn knight something? Engine says, no, I'm good. So I'm good here. I was just really scared of that. I didn't, I just didn't want to do that. So in my mind, I was, I was thinking like, no, I can't, uh, sorry, I can't take this because I just didn't like the way that that turned out. I was wrong. Um, and that's something that I just, I just didn't have a ton of time to like think through everything. So I'm like, I don't want to do that. I had this idea in my head, sacrifice the bishop. This is what I played. He's going to take me and then I'm going to take with my knight or actually, no, I'm going to throw in a check because check this out. His king can't move, right? Uh, he's got a block. I'm gonna take here with my knight. It's a fork. Then I'm thinking I can go to g5, harass the rook that way, or potentially trade here, and then put my knight on here. All these things, I didn't have, well, let's see how much time I had. Um, I had 10 minutes left to make 10 moves. So I'm like, okay, one, one minute per move. I didn't have a ton of time. So I went for it. I played check, he went there, I took. He went back here, and then I realized the queen is controlling all the squares that my knight wants to go to. I can't, like, do what I wanted to do. And then I, in my mind, I thought I had some crazy tactic here, too, where I could, like, take, and I'm going to somehow win a rook. But the queen on e7 is, like, really strong. And, um, yeah, I, I'm just losing now. I shouldn't have sacked the piece. If I would have went with the other line, um... Sorry, where, where are we at here? Okay, before before taking, if I would have just taken here and traded like I showed you earlier, so takes, 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 and then just trade the rooks, it's equal position, and I, I probably have good chances. But I sacrificed the piece that I didn't sacrifice earlier, but now I sacrificed it, and yeah, I just missed. Um, what did I miss? Yes, here. I thought I could play like rook d2 with tempo, Play, and of course, this I calculated this like several moves ago, so that's why I missed this. I thought I could go here. He moves, 
I bring the knight in, I've got a pin, it looks pretty good, and then I realize I can't do that because if I go here, bam, knight f3 check happens and I just lose the rook. So my whole idea there at the end of the line didn't work and now I'm like, I'm just losing, I don't have anything. So I took this, he went check, uh, I went here, he went check, I went here, I'm trying to run, and then something in really interesting happened. He took here, I blocked, he went check, I went here, and then uh, he went here. Okay, after the game, I'm, I'm going to come back to this moment because after the game, uh, he asked me something, and I didn't, I didn't understand what he was asking me, and I'll show you why in just a second. So let me just show you how the game ended. Um, check, only move is to go here. Uh, I can't go here. He just takes it, and uh, so I went here. He took, and this is basically game over now it's it's forcing a queen trade i'm down a piece he's got the pass pawn with the rook behind it everything you you want and uh played a few more moves but the game was over i resigned here so okay so i lost and after at this point in the game he's like he, he asked me if i would have played knight to d4 would you have taken it with your queen and i was like uh kind of thinking like i don't think i would have taken it with my queen I don't know. And he was like, you would have won the game. I'm like, what are you talking about? So let me show you what was going on. I was in my mind uh, when he said that, I was thinking, um, let's see. Yeah, so right here, uh, for some reason, I was thinking of this position and I, and I thought he was talking about like knight to d4, take it with my queen. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense because like, no, I wouldn't have taken it with the queen. Why would I do that? You know, but what he was talking about was after that, check, king here at this position if he played knight d4. And I, I just totally was a move off. Um, but if he would have played this, he actually loses the game because I can take it. Queen takes. And now you can pause. And what can I play here to win the game? What's the winning move for white? If you had a chance to look at that and you're ready to see the solution, Rook to e8 check is the amazing move. Check this out. If the king moves up, there's a fork on the king and the queen, and I'm actually going to win. And then the other move is rook f8. I can take it, and then boom, there's also a fork. So um, amazing. I actually didn't catch that. I was, like I said, thinking about the wrong position when he said that to me. But yeah, that would have been uh, quite the way to win the game. So I think I would have saw that if he played it. Um, maybe I, be, I had like, I was about to make time control. Yeah. 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 I would have, I would have saw it, I think, because this was the 40th move. So I, I got time. Yeah. I got extra time when I played King C2. And then if he would have played that, um, I probably would have spent some extra time and, and I think I would have saw that, but he didn't, he just played here. Obviously this is the easy way to win. And yeah, uh, like I said, I resigned. So crazy game. Um, I feel like I had some decent chances. I, going back to that super complicated position, like I was getting lost actually at a couple moments in the game where I was, I was just having a hard time. Like right around here, I wasn't sure about queen b5. I wasn't sure like what to do with my rooks. Do I do the rooks? Do I do the knight to c3? Do I take? Do I just trade? And again, guys, again, I ended up going with the let me sack a piece line when I didn't have to. So I don't know. I got to stop. I got to stop sacking those pieces, I guess. And then also earlier uh, going back, where was it? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Right around this moment again, right? Like just wanting to sack the piece. I don't know. Got to get that out of my head. Anyway, I, I'm not um, super upset. I feel like I played a good game. I, I did, you know, best I could. I was playing against a really strong player, obviously. So it happens, but um, yeah, it's late. I'm tired from playing and then recapping this video twice. So um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow uh, for round four. Stay sharp. See you soon. Oh, and I keep forgetting to mention all courses are 25% off while I'm at the tournament. There's a code in the description below. You can use it and a link for the courses. So if you were waiting to get one, now would be a good time. Um, I was going to say that like the last two videos and I just forgot. So, and I actually forgot this one too. I'm just going to add this on at the end. I'm going to edit it on anyway. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.